air enters a nozzle. Okay, a little review of a nozzle. You have a larger cross-sectional area to a smaller cross-sectional area. It comes in at state one, flowing in that direction. It goes out at state two, flowing in that direction. It's just one directional for the flow. It's air. When you see air, what do you think of? Ideal gas. It uh, comes in at a temperature 1 of 700 Kelvin and a pressure 1 of 420 kPa. It goes out at a, uh, also velocity 1, uh, 90 meters per second. The pressure at 2 is, uh, no, the temperature at 2. The temperature at 2 is 590 Kelvin and the pressure at 2 is 220 kilopascal. Look at those numbers. Temperature goes down, pressure goes down. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it makes sense. Stray heat transfer can be neglected. So Q dot's equal to 0. There's no shaft work, so that's equal to W dot as well. The nozzle doesn't have any shaft work in or out. And uh, you want to model it as an ideal gas with constant specific heat using this value for C sub P. So we want to use that value of specific heat. And we don't need to go to the air tables. Use a constant specific heat. Okay, calculate the velocity at the exit. All right. I'll go ahead and pause for a second. You write down how you're going to calculate the velocity at the exit of the nozzle. So what you want to do is you want to uh, con introduce a control volume like this. Where does the mass flow cut across the control volume? At 1 and at 2 and no other place. There's no heat transfer or work transfer across that control volume. You could do conservation of mass. You could do conservation of energy. You could do exergy balance, entropy balance. There's four things you can do with a control volume. Mass, energy, entropy, exergy. Right? Mass is trivial. M dot in equal to M dot out. Steady state. Energy is what we really need to get to velocity. So when we do the energy balance, we're going to say, okay, steady state, Q dot, oh, that's zero. Minus W dot, oh, that's zero. M dot, it's in times H1 minus H2 plus Ke1 minus Ke2. Look familiar, neglecting changes in potential energy. The M dots even cancel. So what we have is we have that the kinetic energy outlet is equal to the kinetic energy inlet plus H1 minus H2. Okay, I want to use constant specific heats for air. Can, how can I calculate the change in an enthalpy assuming constant specific heat for air? True. And so let's just go ahead. That kinetic energy is one half V2 squared. This specific kinetic energy is one half V1 squared. And so what we find is that the exit speed V2 is equal to V1 squared plus 2 C sub P T1 minus T2 all square rooted. Did I make an algebraic error or a thumbs up? Look good? Okay. So now I warn you, units, 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 units. So when we continue this problem, we'll put in 90 meters per second and we'll square it. What are the units on that term? Meters squared per second squared. And when you take the square root of it, you'll get meters per second. Perfect. But that's the other one. We have two times unit 1.051 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin times the temperature change. It comes in at 5, oops, 700, and it goes out at 590 Kelvin. So the Kelvins cancel. That's good. But I have this kilojoule per kilogram. A lot of students, ooh, throw out the units and let's just proceed, right? Let's just, no, no, no. You have to remember that there is 
1,000 meters squared per second squared is equal to one kilojoule per kilogram. So the kilojoules per kilogram cancel. Oops. Okay, they cancel. And we have that 1,000. Then you take the square root. And now you can get the right answer. So V2... four hundred and eighty nine meters per second now what is the answer for part B what is the rate of exergy destruction we're looking for look at the units on this are we looking for e dot D or are we looking for e dot D divided by M dot which one are we looking for the second one E dot D divided by M dot. That you can tell by the units. They, they, they want the units in kilojoules per kilogram. How do we solve for this term? Two ways to do it. You either get entropy generation or do an exergy balance. Okay? So... Let's uh, flip a coin. Which one do you want to do? Exergy balance? That's the hard way. Yeah, let's do it both ways and we'll see. If they're consistent, you'll get the right one. But let's do it this way. What you have to do for it's uh, uh, the exergy balance, E-X-B-A-L. Okay, steady state. There's no uh, transfer with the Q. Uh, so maybe I should put EQ and then strike that out, zero. And there's no exergy transfer with the work because there's no work, no heat, no work. There's no none of that, true? And then we're going to have uh, plus the mass flow rate, EF in minus EF out, true, minus E dot D, true? Did I write the exergy balance equation correctly? Thumbs up if you agree. Good. So E dot D divided by M dot, what we're asked to calculate, is going to be the difference in the flow exergy out. Uh, no, it's flow exergy in, sorry. Minus the flow exergy out, which is equal to H1 minus H2 minus T naught S1 minus S2. True? Okay. If you want, you put C sub P, T1 minus T2, minus T naught. How about this S? C sub P, natural log of T1 over T2, minus R, natural log of P1 over P2. You have to know how to be able to calculate the change in entropy of an ideal gas when you have constant specific heats. Okay? So there you go on that. So this is E dot D divided by M dot. Okay. Um, um, okay. Um, I left off a term, right? What term did I leave off? I left off that you have the kinetic energy 1 minus the kinetic energy 2. Sorry about that. True? And so if I have, actually, it's even simpler now, because um, what do I have right here? I have that H1 minus H2 plus Ke1 minus Ke2 is equal to what? Zero. H1 minus H2 plus Ke1 minus Ke2 is equal to zero from the first law. So this is all that remains out of the exergy balance equation. True? Okay. 
If you do this, if you say, I want to calculate it by first calculating sigma dot divided by m dot, I'll have to calculate sigma dot divided by m dot by an entropy balance. When I calculate the entropy balance, it'll be equal to S2 minus S1. True? Okay, when you do that, now if I want to calculate the exergy destruction per unit mass, you take that T naught multiplied by sigma dot divided by M dot. Hey, we just found that to be S2 minus S1. Oh, but I have a minus sign, right? Minus sign. So that minus sign allows me to switch S1 minus S2. Actually, forget it. I'm sorry. I got to get this right here. It's equal to T naught times sigma dot divided by M dot. That's true. Is equal to T naught times S2 minus S1. That's true. Is equal to minus T naught S1 minus S2 because that's precisely what we wrote right there. They're the same exact thing. Okay. Um, let me give you an answer for the rate of exergy destruction. And the answer is going to be 1.73 kilojoules per kilogram. E dot D divided by M dot. 